all three faces of time. Starring Mom, driven by mechanical time. Dad, obsessed with geologic time. And their daughter, entranced with biological time. Biological time. morning I come out here and watch the world wake up. It's cool. Plants, animals, even humans. Every living thing has its own natural daily, monthly, and yearly rhythm. And they've been doing it since long before any human ever imagined the idea of a clock or a calendar. The word circadian comes from the Latin words meaning about a day. Most circadian rhythms seem to follow the rising and setting of the sun. Owls are nocturnal. They have circadian rhythms that are reversed from humans. They're active at night and sleep during the day. It's like we all have an internal clock that just keeps ticking no matter what. My dad's biological clock makes him sleepy at night and wakes him up in the morning. Every morning I wake up before my alarm. But where does this internal TikTok come from? It's time for the Inspector Detector Show. In the brain, a tiny clump of cells known as the suprachiasmatic nuclei, or SCN, regulates our circadian rhythms. That's good brain. Some people joke. They say when a woman has the urge to have a baby, her biological clock is ticking. But don't be fooled. Men have biological clocks, too. I, I categorically deny that I have a biological clock. My biological clock is ticking, too. <laughs> no matter who you are, male or female, plant or animal, you should know everyone has a biological clock ticking away inside. I'm Liz Van Valkenburg. I'm a professor in the botany department at the University of Washington. I started working on electrical properties in plants. Plants, like animals and all other organisms, have circadian rhythms. They know what the 24-hour period is. This mimosa plant goes to sleep every night, and you can see it when it goes to sleep. All of the leaves fold up. Everyone's looking for elements of the clock, both in plants and animals. It isn't a little device that you could actually dissect out of the plant. You can't find it physically. You can't put your fingers on it. I think the way in which the clock is set up in the two cell types, plant and animal, might be real similar. Native people of the Pacific Northwest have long observed these biological clocks at work. For the Puyallup tribe, the names of the months are descriptions of the natural timings in their environment. February is known as... The time when the frog talks. <laughs> April is called Pud Hui Watts. The time of birds whistling. <whistles> Just as our biological clocks control our daily events, they also control the yearly patterns in the lives of living things. From leaves changing color in the fall to salmon migrating, all living things naturally do certain things at certain times. Biological clocks are everywhere. There's a clock inside of all of us right now. Steadily ticking away, keeping the beat, keeping time no matter what we do or where we go. It's all a part of biological time. Geologic time. The following portion of the three faces of time is made possible by a generous grant from the Deep Time Foundation. The only place where you'll find time piled 4.5 billion years high.
a lot. No problem. Newspapers are records of daily events. Stack a bunch of them together, and you've got a record of time. You start with the most recent events at the top, and the deeper you go, the older the news. Layers of rock pile up over time just like layers of newspaper. These rock strata provide a record of the Earth's history. The dynamic nature of the Earth has resulted in the processing and reprocessing of its rocks and soils for hundreds of millions of years. As a result, an Earth rock more than three billion years old is a rare find. Geologic time is hard to imagine. Almost nothing in a single human lifetime changes when measured in geologic time. Back to the Inspector Detective Show. If you could watch the entire history of the Earth sped up to a human lifetime, our planet would seem like a chaotic, cataclysmic carnival. The sea level would be rising and falling like an elevator. Glaciers would be skating down from the poles, only to retreat back in the blink of an eye. Coastlines would be sunny one moment, deep under the sea the next. The continents would be sliding like slugs, and volcanoes shooting off like Roman candles everywhere you looked. Important events get big headlines in the newspaper. The same is true for the geologic record. The newsworthy events, the catastrophes, are obvious in the layers of rock. In fact, it's the catastrophes that leave the best record in the Earth's many rock layers. I'm Pat Pringle, and I'm a geologist with the Washington Department of Natural Resources. This is somewhat of a typical Northwest day. Here we're standing at Mount Rainier at about 4,200 feet, and it's drizzling on us. We're in the clouds. Volcanic ash is really significant to, to geologists and archaeologists because each volcanic eruption produces somewhat of a unique type of volcanic ash. Also, because they happen at different times, they're very useful as time markers. These layers, they're like pages in the book of geological time. We have the eruption of Mount Mazama that produced this yellow ash. Mount Mazama ash is the product of a very large eruption which produced Crater Lake that we know today. And the next chapter is that this organic material formed on top of the Mount Mazama ash. So we know it's younger than this because it's sitting on top of it. So there's a lot of geologic history being told right here in this little area. The shape of the earth is carved and created by geological processes like volcanoes and glaciers and streams. When you start seeing geological processes at work, it gives you another dimension. It gives you the dimension of time. Geologic time is a different kind of time. It stretches back, way back into the past. Years and years and years into the past. Thousands, millions, billions of years. So many years, in fact, that scientists have cut up geologic time into different slices. One way geologists slice up time is into eras. A timeline of life on Earth emerges when we chart the ancient plant and animal fossils that lived when each layer of rock was formed. The most recent fossils are all from the Cenozoic era. The Cenozoic era is a time of mastodons, giant sloths, saber-toothed tigers, and humans. Millions of years is a long time. It's geologic time, and the Earth itself is billions of years old. That's a lot of time. It's deep, deep time. A time so long ago that no human was around to look at it, or write a story about it, or even take a picture of it. But we can learn a lot about deep time by studying the layers of rock of our planet. The news of the past is contained in these layers for us to read. That's our planet's story, and we're sticking to it. Mechanical Time. The following portion of Three Faces of Time is brought to you by the makers of mechanical time. Calendars, clocks, and watches are our business. We keep you on time all the time. Time, the most vital natural resource. All the scientific devices of chronology are machines manufacturing time. like nobody ever has enough of it. But keeping track of it is nothing new. I mean, human beings have spent thousands and thousands of years trying to figure out the best way to tell time. 5,000 years ago, the Babylonians developed a calendar based on the cycles of the moon. Everything is going. Roger, nail. 
At the same time, the Egyptians created their own calendar based on the stars and used it to accurately predict the flooding of the Nile every year. Knowing when the floods were coming helped save lives and livestock. Calendars followed the moon and the sun to track the days and months. But all sorts of contraptions were built to measure the hours, minutes, and seconds, like the sundial. Of course, sundials don't work at night or when it's cloudy or raining. Plus, it's really hard to wear one on your wrist. <laughs> Excuse me, do you have the time? People came up with all sorts of creative ways to mark the time without the sun. This is a courting candle. Now, about 150 years ago, in the pioneer days, when a young man would come courting, the parents of the girl would allocate a certain amount of time for the couple to be together measured by the courting candle. When the candle burned down to here, it was time for the young man to go. <gasps> oh, and honey, when you start dating, this candle's gonna be set right about here. There are so many kinds of clocks and calendars used in so many different times. There's not enough time to list them all. You've got your 19th century alley-oop calendar with 12 pie-shaped sections and 30 or 31 holes into which a tiny peg was placed to mark each day. You've got sand glasses developed hundreds of years ago and still used today. You've got pocket watches used by railroad conductors to make sure the trains departed to the stations on time. You've got your atomic clocks which is so accurate, they will only be off by one second every 300 million years. And I'm just getting started. I have invented a time machine. I call it a clock. My name's Doc Ferringer, Ed, Dr. Ed Ferringer, and I'm old, chasing 100. <laughs> I make the complete clock right here. I built uh, about 300, yeah, 300 big ones all over the world. The Lincoln High School here in Tacoma, the Proctor Clock here, the uh, clock out on Bridgeport, the t Clock Tower Square, of course, building one for Old Town. Yeah, oh, I like Tacoma. Tacoma's been good to me. So that, that's in Lincoln High School. Yeah, the guy that took that picture, I didn't even know he took it. I was up there working on that dial. If you take the penman, and lay it, put it on a knife edge and balance it. That's the point of oscillation, and that's, that's where you start with your time. The pendulum operates the escapement. Let's the time go by one tooth at a time. And the length of the pendulum is what measures the time. A meter pendulum beats one second. A two meter pendulum beats uh, two seconds. A lot of math on the pendulum. Of course, like Big Ben, I, I repaired it after they dropped the bomb down through the tower there. Everybody has to do something, so I just picked on clocks. You know, people have been keeping track of time for centuries, slicing it into years, weeks, days, hours, minutes, seconds, even fractions of seconds. But no matter how you slice it, there's still one thing we haven't been able to do, and that's to create more of it. There's just never enough time to go around.